Thank you. So welcome to check it out for January and February, only on March 2nd, but don't worry, you'll have a March. We're going to do a March, April one in April. Um, so you will, you will get more, I promise. <laughs> um, so for those of you that are coming and attending for the first time, I'm Tegan Beasy. I'm the Youth Services Consultant here at the State Library of Iowa. You can contact me at my email here or the phone number. Um, I'm also on social media. You can find me there if you want to reach out. I'm more than happy to talk. Um, I love collection development. I love suggesting books. I love books written for youth. So this is one of my favorite things to do every month. And I'm so sorry. My eyelash keeps poking me in the eye. Um, so I'm really excited to talk about these great books that came out at the beginning of this new year. And I'm excited to hear what you've all been reading too. So we're going to start off with picture books. These range, but I just had a basic general uh, ages, babies through seven, um, because picture books can, you, anybody can read picture books. I highly suggest reading them as an adult. Uh, you can find a lot of great stories there. So our first picture book is What Are You? Um, and this is by Nyla Magruder. I'm sorry if I said her name wrong. Uh, this is about a creature um, named What Are You that doesn't know where she's from. So all of the other animals have a story of where they're from. For example, the rabbit was born in a planter's hole or um, the wolf was born from moonlight. So she wants to know what her special story is. And she asks all her animal friends, about their story and then goes on her own adventure of discovering who she is and where she came from. Uh, this is great for young kids who are learning about, about family, about their history, um, trying to figure out their place in the world. It would also be really great um, for a graduation gift. Like, um, oh, the places you'll go is one that I see given a lot to, to grads of any, any, age, any age group. This would be another really good one to kind of get into that mix as well. And the watercolors are beautiful. The illustrations just catch the eye and keep the reader's attention. And What Are You is just a very cute, interesting, different little creature that I think a lot of kids will be drawn to. Next up is Smooch, a celebration of the enduring power of love by Karen Kilpatrick. Um, so this is just a sweet little fun picture book to read like for, for guardians to read with their kiddos. Um, about how do you let your child know that they're loved? Um, is it hugs? Is it kisses? Is it playing games? And it's just a lot of a lot of fun. Um, it's sweet, probably like a nice bedtime book before you go to sleep. Um, or if they're having a bad day, a great way to perk them up. Um, just it's just it's lovely, uh, especially when kids are starting to learn more about relationships with their parents and in their family and other people. Next is uh, The Year We Learn to Fly by Jacqueline Woodson. This is the companion to The Day You Begin. Um, you don't need to have read it, uh, but it, you can tell with the art and how they connect. Um, so this is about a brother and a sister who um, their grandmother tells them when they're in, when they're stuck, when they don't have something to do, or when they're sad, to use their imagination to bring them out of whatever low point that they're in. So it's a dreary day, they're at home, they're stuck inside, they can't go outside and play, and they decide to use their imagination. Um, and they're able to be free of their boredom and go have fun. But one day when they're arguing, they are both getting to a really low point. They don't know whose side should be what, and they decide, all right, let's use our imagination to fix the situation and figure out why we're upset with each other. Um, so the artwork is just as beautiful as the day you begin. It's colorful, it's vibrant, and the illustrations are a lot of fun, very eye-catching. Next, we have Love Violet by Charlotte Sullivan Wild. Uh, this is about Violet. She only wants to give a Valentine to her classmate, Mira. Mira is the nicest girl, has the prettiest smile, and she's always so excited. And Violet makes a special Valentine for her to ask her if she wants to go on an adventure. So this is a very sweet book about trying to be true to yourself and how do you reach out to people that you feel like you have a special connection with to show them that they're special to you. And even when you're little, there's a lot of it's hard to make friends to to reach out and be with that person that you are interested in forming a relationship with. And the illustrations, again, this is really sweet. Uh, this would be a great Valentine's Day read. Um, and you could even make the little um, Valentine that is 
on the front of the book. On Baba's back, uh, this is a board book. So this one is really great for, for youngsters. So uh, it's all about learning to walk and taking your first steps. So Coco and Baba are very, very close. Coco literally does everything with Baba, eats, sleeps, plays, everything. But then one day, Coco wants to do something different than Baba. So Coco has to take their own first steps away from Baba and adventure out on their own. So this is a really fun for when kids start to like learn to walk or even start to go do new things. Like maybe they're going to preschool for the first time or a babysitter um, or even just playing on their own with something they always played with their parents uh, or their guardians. So this, this is a sweet, fun picture book. And who doesn't like a good koala? Okay. Uh, yes, no. A first conversation about consent. This is a nonfiction picture book. Um, there's a lot of picture books in this um, series about different nonfiction topics. I think this is very important because this is something that I feel like wasn't always discussed when, like, I was a child, for instance, like when someone said, Hey, I want to give you a hug, like, you had to hug them. Uh, so, this is just really a great way for guardians to talk with their kiddos about how you can say no in a situation, how you can let who you're with know you're uncomfortable, that you don't have to do what they want you to do. Like, for example, in this, um, in the book, there's a spread where this character asks the little kid if they want to be tickled. That was my least favorite thing growing up. I hated being tickled because I couldn't breathe and it made me really uncomfortable. But it's like when you're, you feel like you have to do what the adult says. So this is Fantastic. So it's talking about with other kids. It's talking about with adults. It's talking about just comfort and and um, I can't come up with the word that I'm looking boundaries, boundaries and, you know, being comfortable enough to speak up and not being afraid. But it doesn't do it in a scary manner. It's very accessible and it's a great conversation for the reader to have with their guardian. Next up is I Am Golden. This is a great book for those that loved Eyes That Kiss in the Corners. It is a celebration of Asian American children and why they're beautiful. It talks about their, um, it, it describes as we see eyes that point toward the sun that give us the warmth and joy of a thousand rays when you smile. We see hair as inky black and smooth as a peaceful night sky. We skin, we see skin brushed with gold. So this is great for children who maybe feel like they don't fit in. They're not sure why they don't look like other people. And this is just a beautiful celebration. And if Eyes That Kiss in the Corners is popular at your library, I'm sure I Am Golden will be too. Next up, this one I was really excited about, is um, Box Giant Leap, One Moon Rock's Journey Through Time and Space by no one other than Neil Armstrong. Uh, so this is his only picture book. And it tells the story of the earth and the moon from the perspective of Bach the rock. Um, so Bach is actually a rock that Neil Armstrong was given from the moon and he named it Bach. So this picture book tells how Bach was once on earth and what earth was like when he was on earth. And then a asteroid collides and Bach is shot off into space um, after the collision and is there when the moon is formed and winds up on the moon only to hang out there and watch the earth progress through time until one day neil armstrong gets out of his his spaceship and steps down and picks up bach and takes him home uh so it's all about the kind of the process in the life cycle of earth and the moon and what is out there in space it's a beautiful book the illustrations are great and if you have a fan of of the moon in general this one's a great one, but I think this would get a lot of um, attention from any reader. Because Claudette by Tracy Baptiste. So I did not know who Claudette Colvin was until I read this picture book. And I'm sorry to say that I did not learn about her before. She um, actually was the teen who started the M Montgomery bus boycotts. Uh, she took a stand and stayed on a bus before nine months before Rosa Parks did. So this is something I never heard about. To me, I thought Rosa Parks was the first person to do that. I had no idea that Claudette did that. Um, so she was at school and she was learning about Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth. And she said, I'm going to do something to stand up for myself and try to make things right. So she 
two uh, sat on a bus and refused to give her seat up to a white woman. And that spurred on Rosa Parks and spurred on the rest of the Montgomery bus boycott. So this was really fascinating to learn about. And I think she is a figure that we should continue to share and um, tell young readers about. This is why I love picture book biographies because I learned so much about people that I didn't know. So if you haven't picked up a good picture book biography, please do so. Okay, now we have Out of a Jar by Deborah Marcero. This is a uh, follow-up to her first book, In a Jar. Um, she was a faculty uh, advisor at my grad school and I had her for workshop and she is delightful. Um, she so knows her books. Um, it doesn't matter what age group, like she wrote, she read my YA and she gave me great feedback. She can really tap into emotions, which ties into this book super, super well. So this is about Llewellyn, a bunny that doesn't like to feel afraid, afraid or sad or embarrassed or any of those negative feelings. And nobody likes to feel like that. So what he does is he starts bottling them up in jars when he doesn't want to feel them. So like see the he's sitting on that little yellow jar and he's got the green and the pink. So one could be embarrassment and one is sadness and one could be failure. Um, so then he's bottling all these negative emotions away, but then the only emotions he has are joy and excitement, but he starts getting into trouble at school because he's not paying attention the way he should be. So he starts bottling up his happy emotions too. And it, after a while, he's not feeling anything. So then it discusses what happens when you bottle up your feelings. So this is a great book to discuss with children about their feelings and expressing them in a healthy manner, but also not keeping them to themselves because I'm sure we all have experienced bottling things up and then letting it all come out at once. Um, so this is a fantastic picture book for that. And her illustrations are just beautiful. This one, Bathe the Cat by Alice B. McGinty. So if you haven't met me before, I love cats. I'm obsessed with cats. Um, that's, we were, that's why we are talking about cats when we came in. So this is a hilarious picture book. It's um, chore day and everybody has a list and on the list is to bathe the cat. And the cat does not want to take a bath. Um, anytime I see someone that bathes a cat on on the internet. I'm like, how are you alive? How did you succeed <laughs> in bathing that cat? Because my cats would not have it. So the cat takes the list of chores and messes everything up. So it might say they're vacuuming the lawn or um, what else was there? Uh, vacuuming the lawn and sweeping the dishes and rocking the rug. Um, so all these the people in the family are all running around trying to do the chores that the cat put out for them, but they realize something's not quite right. So you'll have to read it to see if the cat escapes the bath or not. All right, so next up is early readers. Um, this was a very slow time of year for early readers. So there's only one, so I'm very sorry, but I'm hoping I will have more next time. But it was, um, I shared some of the January, February early readers in December um, to look ahead. So um, I'll, I will definitely re-mention Corn, Bread, and Poppy by Matthew Cordell. It's his first early reader. Um, he is a Caldecott winner. He's great. Um, definitely check that one out for sure if you haven't added it to your collection yet. So this time we have Geraldine Poo and her cat, her cat, oh, it's supposed to say cat hat too. Sorry, apparently I just was stuck on cat. So uh, her cat hat too. This is a graphic novel early reader. Um, it's the second one in a series. The first one is called Geraldine Poo and her lunchbox too. Um, this is a really great introduction to graphic novels. Um, at the beginning of each of them, it tells the reader how to read a graphic novel. So if you have younger readers who've never read a comic before, this would be a great place to get them started. Um, this is a very relatable story about a girl who is maybe not totally comfortable with herself, isn't sure if she really likes her haircut. So she wears her cat hat all the time because it makes her feel safe. But picture day is coming up and she is not allowed to wear a hat. It says so in the rules. So Geraldine has to figure out how she can be comfortable with who she is and with her hair um, and be ready to be happy and smiling for picture day. And the illustrations are adorable. And again, if you like animals, anything with an animal, I'm a sucker for that. Okay. Now we've got middle grade, about eight, ages eight to 11, um, but there's some always great middle grade for your younger high schoolers. I don't think you're ever too old to read middle grade. Um, definitely 
suggest these to your young adults too. Um, and your adults, because there are so many middle grade books now that I've read that I'm just like a floored and they're fantastic. So I'm really excited to share these ones with you. All right, this one is Operation Do-Over by Gordon Corman. So um, if you had readers that enjoyed his book Restart, this is a, a it's similar, but, but different. Um, and if they liked that one, I think they'll really enjoy this one. This is about Mason and his friend Ty. They were best friends forever until um, at seventh grade, there is a girl that they both like and she comes between them and they fall out. Um, Mason is really sad because everything in his life hasn't been going well. His parents are divorced. His dog passed away. He loses his best friend and he doesn't know what to do to make things better. So Mason is super into science and he knows like you can't turn back time as much as I'd like to, I would. Well, one day he figures out how to do that and goes back to seventh grade before his parents are divorced, before his dog died and before he and Ty lost their friendship. So he tries to figure out to how to save his friendship with Ty, but also these other things as well. Like, how can I change my life so these other things don't happen? Um, but he learns that sometimes certain things are inevitable and he has to figure out what is actually going to happen and what was meant to be. So it's a fun, like, sci-fi fantasy kind of um, retry story. So it is a lot like Restart, but with more fantasy aspect to it. All right. North Wind by Gary Paulson. Um, I'm so sad that we lost him earlier this year. I'm so excited that we're able to read this book and that it came out um, right around when he passed away. So we're able to celebrate him and still share him with new readers. Um, so this is about a um, boy, an orphan named Leaf, and he lives in a, a fish camp in the middle of nowhere um, and a plague reaches the fish camp and he realizes that he has to leave to, to be safe. So he takes um, a cedar canoe and he goes in a fjord and just starts navigating. Um, and there's all kinds of wildlife danger. He's alone. There is nature. There's unexpected things happening. Um, and it's really, it's, it ties into, um, oh gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Nordic, thank you. The, um, Nordic mythology. So it's an adventure, but it has like a fantasy kind of aspect to it, but it's very much an adventure story. Um, and I think this would be a great one for his fans, but also a great one to introduce new readers to him from. Next up is Hide and Geek by T.P. Jagger. So there are four kids whose names spell geek, Gina, Edgar, Elena, and Kevin. Um, they are best friends. They've been best friends forever. Um, they're always into just solving puzzles and figuring out mysteries. And um, their hometown has was the, the home of a famous toy maker. And she had a popular puzzle sphere series. Um, when she passed away, the toy factory was shut down. And now they're trying to get like take the factory out of town, but a lot of the kids' parents are losing jobs because they worked at the toy factory. Um, so they band together to try to find and solve the last puzzle that's at the toy factory that would maybe save their parents' jobs. Um, and they have to see if they can find it. And there's a fun little dog too, of course. Um, and this would be great for like fans of Mr. Lemoncello, uh, all the fun different mystery series. And it also reminded me a bit of Scooby-Doo. So if you have any Scooby-Doo fans, I think this would be a great one for them as well. Next is Operation Sisterhood. So this is about a girl um, named Bo. And she and her mom move in together with her mom's boyfriend and his twins. And their house is just completely full. They're in this brownstone in New York. And she doesn't quite know how she's going to fit in. They're all on top of each other. And there's a bunch of animals too. There's a dog, two cats, a bearded dragon, a turtle, and there's chickens. So you can see the little chickens there and the dog and the cat. Chickens, man, I have some chicken stories. Maybe we'll talk about that later. Um, they're, they can be intense. Um, so this is just a fun story of how like found family, new families, building new relationships and how you can start a life with people that you've never really lived with before. You've never been comfortable with before and just how beautiful blending a family can be. Next up is Riley's Ghost by John David Anderson. 
So this is about Riley. Um, she always feels like she's alone, especially since her best friend, Emily, ditched her for the mean girls who don't like Riley. Um, one day they push her into a locked room in the science closet and nobody realizes that she's there. So the school shut down and the doors are all locked. The windows are all closed. Riley manages to get out of the closet, but then she is unable to open any of the doors to leave. So she's walking around the school, but she doesn't feel like she's alone. She feels like there's something there with her. Um, but she likes, you know, ghost stories and scary stories, but she's also wondering why all these weird things are happening in the school. And is she the person that is supposed to solve it? And how could this help her with her difficult situation that she's in? So this is a nice, like light spooky. Um, like there's no, it's not like jump out horror. Uh, but if you're, if you want some, a book, if you have a patron who wants one, that's a little like kind of spooky, but not way scary, this would be a good good one to go to. Next up is Dog Star by Megan Shepard. So this is Megan Shepard's second uh, middle grade novel. Her first one was The Secret Horses of Briar Hill. Um, she also has two, two, three YA series. So um, she's well published across both age groups. Uh, this is about Laika, the, um, the dog in Russia that was sent to the moon. And she's a, um, she was found on the streets of Russia. She was a stray puppy and they took her in into the science, um, the science lab to kind of see what they could do to send her to space as a test dog. Um, and then she meets Mina, who is the daughter of the science of a scientist that works where Laika is in. And they form a relationship and a friendship, but then they learn that the scientists are planning something that might break them apart. Um, it's, a beautiful, beautiful book. And the story of Laika always breaks my heart. There's a graphic novel called Laika that I, I loved. I thought it was fantastic, um, but it's definitely a, a little bit, so I would say YA, or if you have maybe like a more mature middle grade, um, because it, it deals with animals and I'm a, I'm a crybaby. So anything <laughs> with animals makes me sad, but it's a beautiful book. And I think it's really something special to read about Laika and um, her story. Okay, Wishing Upon the Same Stars by Jaquetta Namar Feldman. Um, again, I'm going to be really excited because she uh, was in grad school with me and she is, I think, one semester behind me. And this is her debut novel. So I'm super excited to tell you all about it. Um, this is about Yasmin and um, Ailet. And Yasmin moves to San Antonio uh, from Detroit and she doesn't feel like she fits in at all. Um, where she grew up in Detroit, she had a predominantly Arab neighborhood where she felt like she fit in. Um, and now she feels like she doesn't really know um, where she belongs. And then she meets Ailet who is Israeli American and they grow a lot closer. They become great friends. They support each other and they have this bond of like, I'm here with you. You're not alone. You're not the odd one out. But then Yasmin's grandmother moves in uh, after living in Jerusalem and kind of puts a, a peg between them. Um, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict really comes home when her grandma moves in with them. And they try to navigate their friendship in how, how can we be friends with each other here while my family maybe isn't as supportive of that. So they navigate that as well as navigating school at the same time. Next is Cameron Battle and the Hidden Kingdoms. So this is great if you have patrons who love Black Panther. This is immediately, I was like, this is a recommendation if they like Black Panther. Um, so Cameron grew up reading the book of Chidon. Chidani. Um, and there are stories of a fabled kingdom that cut itself off from the world to save uh, the Igbo people from danger. So this book is passed down through the family, um, but Cameron is never able to see it. His grandma has it locked away, but it's his only connection to his family, who dis his parents who disappeared. But one day he's able to access the book. And when he opens it, he and his two best friends are transported to Chidani. Um, and instead of seeing this beautiful world that they thought was going to be like peaceful and happy, uh, they, the queen is seeking, her sister is seeking to destroy the city and take over ruling. So he has to help his family and find a way to save Chidani from danger. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be um, more in a series, but I think this will be an easy sell for sure. 
And we have Omar rising. Uh, this is about Omar. He is sent to Galib Academy boarding school. I'm sorry, I have to take one sip of this really fast. Um, Galib Academy boarding school. And he is the son of a servant. So the only way he's there is on scholarship, but he knows he wants to learn. He wants to progress. He wants to be able to succeed. Um, and he can't wait to learn everything he, he can at school um, and join science club and join the soccer team. But when he's, when he gets there, he learns that first year scholarship students aren't allowed to join teams or clubs. And he's forced to do menial labor. Um, Omar is really upset. He doesn't think it's right. Um, but he is also has to be careful because otherwise he will lose his scholarship. Um, and he also learns that they try to weed out the kids on scholarship. They try to make them miserable. So they leave. So, um, they make it nearly impossible for them to graduate because they try to take tuition away. Uh, so this is the story of Omar and his new friends that he meets at Galib, and they try to set out to change a rigged system. Um, and it's what can you do when you feel like you're, you're, you're lower than somebody, like what can you do to change things? What can you do to make a difference? And it shows how strong your voice really can be. And it's a companion novel to Amal Unbound. So if you have Amal Unbound and it moves in your, your collection, I definitely suggest adding this one too. Okay, we have the view from the very best house in town. I always for kept forgetting to type the very in, so I'm glad that I, I got it this time. Um, this is about Sam and Asha. Uh, they're best friends, but they live in completely different worlds. They're in very different parts of society. Um, and it is Asha's dream to live in Donnybrook, which is this mansion that is on the hill in their hometown. When uh, Sam starts befriending Preston, who lives in Donnybrook, uh, Asha is very upset because Asha has been banned from Donnybrook, told by uh, Preston's family that she's not allowed to be there. Uh, so it's told from the perspective of all three of uh, well, Asha, Sam, and not Preston, but the perspective of the house. That was what I really liked about this one. Um, I feel like setting can be such a character in books, and it was wonderful to hear the house and what the house thought about the characters and the situation. Uh, so it explores themes of prejudice and classism, um, and it talks about what really makes a house a home. And this is a debut novel as well. I'm really excited to see what else they write. And we have young adult next, so roughly ages 12 to 18, or, you know, 32, because I will read YA books forever. <laughs> All right, the first one is At the End of Everything. Uh, this is a great read-alike for Wilder Girls um, by Romy Power, and it, it's a little less fantasy-esque is that one, but it made, it gave me a lot of Wilder Girl vibes. So um, all these kids are at Hope, it's Hope Juvenile Treatment Center. Um, as for teenage delinquents who've just been sent away because nobody wants to deal with them. Um, one day all the guards start acting strange at school and then they just fail to show up. So the teens band together to figure out how they can break out from this facility and see what's going on. And they encounter soldiers outside the gates and they find out there's a rapidly spreading infectious disease. Um, and no one's allowed to leave their houses or travel without a, um, a permit. So they're stuck at hope and they don't know what they're going to be able to do without anybody there to help them and protect them. Um, so it's also great, like Lord of the Flies, because they start losing supplies and the plague is going through the ranks. And then there's the, the power struggle between who's in charge. Um, so it's, it's a fantastic, interesting view of teenagers in a tough situation. Next up, all right, if you don't know yet, I'm a huge Buffy fan. So this is in every generation. Um, all of my cats are named after Buffy characters, except for Indy, because I found him at a dig for archaeology. So when this book came out, I saw it on Edelweiss and screamed um, and was able to download it. And I actually read it in August. So I've been anxiously awaiting to share this with all of you in January. Um, if you... You don't need to be a Buffy fan to read this. Kendare Blake is fantastic at giving enough background that readers can get into this story um, and meet new characters and just be able to jump in with the other ones. So this is about Willow, Willow Rosenberg's daughter, Frankie. 
um, and they're living in New Sunnydale. Um, and when some like Buffy and some of the other Slayers go missing, Frankie is determined to help figure out what happened. But she discovers that she's quite a lot more than a witch. Um, so it brings in fantastic new characters. It has characters that you know and love from the series, Willow, Oz, Spike. Spike is a watcher. It is hilarious. Um, so this was definitely a labor of love from someone who was in, who is a fan of the series. And I could easily see kids picking this up. It's just got great horror and um, fun. It's funny. There's great comedy and it's just a page turner. Um, it's the first in a series as well. I'm very excited to see what happens in the next one. All right. Then we have When You Get a Chance by Emma Lord. Uh, this is about Millie Price. She is determined to be a Broadway star. Um, and and um, she's worried that like her dad will try to stop her and he doesn't want her to leave home. And she's worried about her drama club rival, Oliver, who they just constantly are like, I it's it's like a, a fight for the top and who's the best. And she also gets what she calls her Millie moods, uh, where they threaten to overwhelm her and kind of just bring her down. So she's trying to figure out how she can overcome all of this. Um, and while she's figuring this out, she discovers what her dad used to write in his live journal in 2003 and learns a little bit more about her mom that she never learned about before. So she sets out to figure out um, who her mom is. There are three women. Uh, there's Steph, she was an aspiring stage actress. There's Farah, a dancer, and Beth, who is a sweet, uh, stage enthusiast, and she also has a daughter, age 15. So Millie starts to wonder if she actually has a sister and more family out there than she ever knew. Um, it gave me Mamma Mia vibes, and it's just a great, fun story that will keep you hooked while you're reading. Okay, next we have the Ivory Key. Uh, so this is a world where magic is used to um, to source everything in their country. So there are mines where they where they mine for magic, and everything is starting to run out. So our Vera, the main character, has to find the ivory key, which is rumored to make a new source of magic. Um, but in order to do this, she has to do this with her um, family members, her siblings, who all have different reasons they want the key. Uh, so she wants it to save magic and everybody else has a different. So Caleb wants to, he was accused of assassinating the former, the former king. So he has to clear his name. Um, her one sibling that ran away and wanted to cut all family ties has to prove her loyalty. Um, and the other sibling wants to sell it to the highest bidder. So they all have secret reasons of why they want the key. So they have to figure out how to navigate finding it while also staying true to their agenda. Um, this reminded me a lot of We Hunt the Flame um, that had similar secret um, quests that people had going on. Um, and how do you find a, an item together and manage to be the person who gets it out of everybody else? Okay, now we've got The Storyteller by Catherine Williams. This is about a um, girl who discovers that her aunt might actually be uh, the lost Russian princess Anastasia. She knows that there is a lot of, of mystery and theory around what happened to Anastasia. Um, so she finds out from her grandmother's journal or her aunt's diaries that she might actually be Anastasia. So she goes on a an exploration to figure out who her aunt really is and how she might connect. Uh, so it's great. It's a, like a fun mystery. Uh, there's great history in there. And look at that cover. I just, I love the cover. It immediately, that's why I picked it up. I didn't even know what it was about the first time I looked at it. And I, I loved it. It's a lot of fun. So if you have some history buffs, definitely suggest this one for them. Castles in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian. This is the first in a series. Um, I luckily got an advanced reader copy of this and read it a little bit ago. So um, it's about Empress Margot, who has three daughters. Um, and she sends them, she marries them off to three different kingdoms um, because she wants to form one big empire that she rules over. So she and her daughter, she trains her daughters from the time they were born to when she sends them off in the ways of, of spying and seduction and all these different things that they can do in order to make the new kingdom theirs to give to her. 
Um, there's some magic in here, but one of the kingdoms is against magic use and all of the girls have these different powers, so they have to hide them. Um, it's really interesting. Each of the kingdoms are really well built and they're all very unique. Um, your perspectives are told from each of the sisters. Uh, all of the voices are unique. I was never confused about whose story I was in. Uh, it deals with a lot of interpersonal sibling relationships, as well as like being a part of a new family and uh, navigating different court politics. So it's a it's a big book. Um, it's over 500 pages, but it doesn't feel like 500 pages. I was really excited to read it. And the end makes you definitely want the second book. So I can't wait till it comes out, but I'm probably going to have to wait a year. That's what I get for reading it early. Next up is Ecstasia by Claire Legrand. Um, so this is her next kind of horror uh, horror fantasy book. Um, this has definitely uh, the Grace Year and uh, Handmaid's Tale vibes for sure. It also reminded me of M. Night Shyamalan's The Village. So this is about a girl who has um, been told her whole life that these four saints that live in their town, Haven, are um, the connection to um, the elders and their religion. So she is finally going to be one of the four um, saints in Haven. And when this happens, she's reached out to by um, two of her other other girls that were in uh, that were in the saints. And they find that they're not actually hearing the truth. Um, there's creatures running through the woods. There's witches that they've been warned about. And there's the mysterious devil's rock that you're not supposed to go to. So I don't want to say too much and give anything away, but it's a fantastic story of learning the truth behind a lot of the, like your things, a lot of things in life, learning um, why certain things are done the way they were. And it also gave me vibes of the year of the witching. It was an adult novel that came out. It was sometimes shared as YA. It would definitely be one that teens would like. I think these would be great read-alikes for that. So if you've read that one or you had teens who read that one, definitely have them check out Ecstasia. Next is This Woven Kingdom. Uh, this is a first in a new epic uh, fantasy, but it's got great romance into it too. It's based on Persian mythology. Uh, this is about a servant who finds out that they are actually the long lost heir to an ancient Jinn kingdom, um, but they have to hide in plain sight so that way they are safe. Um, and then the crown prince has learned about these prophecies foretelling the death of his king, um, but then he finds out that it might be the servant girl who, you know, had, who kind of sticks out to him, um, might actually be the person he has to watch out for. So it's about their relationship, navigating court, and um, how do you how do you beat a prophecy that has been foretold for years? Next up is a thriller. It's These Deadly Games by Diana Urban. This is about Crystal, um, who gets this message on her phone. Let's play a game. You have 24 hours to win. If you break my rules, she dies. If you call the police, she dies. If you tell your parents or anyone else, she dies. Are you ready? And that is all about uh, her little sister. There's a video of her um, gagged and tied up and the kidnapper starts making her all do all these weird things to protect her sister. So they start off as pretty normal things like steal a test, put it in a locker, bake some brownies, make a prank call. But soon she starts doing things that she realizes are meant to hurt or kill her friends. So she has to figure out how to protect her friends while also protecting her sister and figuring out who the person is that has her sister before the 24 hours are up. Um, so anybody who likes Karen McManus, um, Diana Urban has written some other thrillers. So if they like her other ones, they will definitely like this one. Um, I think this one will be very popular. And yeah, Karen McManus fans definitely would enjoy this. And we've got Cold by Mariko Tamaki. This is about a boy, Todd, who um, doesn't really know any of his friends at school and not his friends, but any of his classmates at school and nobody really knows him. Um, but when the story starts, he's dead. Um, and Todd is a ghost and he's hovering over his body um, as the detectives are investigating his murder. And Todd is trying to replay everything that happened in his life to figure out how he got there. Um, and then there's Georgia, who didn't really know Todd, but she heard about his death and then just can't stop thinking about him um, because they're both outcasts at school. Neither of them really fit in. So Georgia decides she's going to figure out that 
figure out what happened to Todd, but she also feels like she's met him somewhere before, even though she didn't know him. So it's a mystery kind of ghost story. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's the Mariko Tamaki is the winner of the Prince honor for um, Laura Jean keeps breaking up with me. That was fantastic storytelling. So if you have fans of that graphic novel, I think they'll really like um, their Mariko's foray into um, YA prose. Okay. So next up, I'm going to share with you what I'm reading because I like to share. Um, and I always, if you're reading anything that you wanted to share right now, please put it in the chat. I would love to look at the chat when we're done and see what you're reading. Um, and then some other people might like to get some ideas from you too. So I'm reading a few books right now. The first one I'm reading is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. Um, I'm reading the Owl Crate edition, which is the white cover. Um, I love seeing them, the two covers juxtaposed next to each other to see what they look like. Um, I pretty sure I talked about this in a check it out previously, but this is a great dark academia novel. Um, it's about a girl who goes back to her private school the year after her girlfriend dies. And she believes it was from the spirits of some of the Dalloway witches who were murdered at the Dalloway school um, back when the school was founded in the 1800s. So she's trying to prove what really happened to Alex and uh, other people there are trying to tell her why magic isn't real. So I have no idea what's happening <laughs> and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. I'm also listening to the sorority murder. I love listening to thrillers. It's my like go-to to listen to. If I'm not listening to a thriller, it's gotta be something else <laughs> really good to catch my attention. Um, this is really interesting. I'm almost to the end of it. And it's about a, a woman who leaves the National Guard and starts, helps a, a boy who starts a podcast to find out what happened to a girl that died three years ago on their campus. Um, and they're all talking, they all have like different backstories that I'm still getting pieces of while we're going. Um, I've discovered his backstory, but I haven't discovered the, um, the previous, the ex-National Guard story yet. So I'm very excited to keep going. And um, I'm writing a novel in verse, so I'm reading a poetry handbook by Mary Oliver. If you have young writers at your library, and if you have anybody who writes poetry or novels in verse or enjoys those, this book is fantastic. It's only like 128 pages. It's really short. There are fantastic examples and prompts and different things throughout it. It was written in 1994, but you can't even tell. Like, it doesn't matter. This is huge. Um, so if you have readers who, or writers that are looking for something like this, this is a great dive into poetry. And um, we're going to do a giveaway. Yay. So what we're going to do is I will get the class list from, or the attendee list from Sam um, when we're done. And this book by V. E. Schwab just came out yesterday and I was sent um, a hard copy. I read an advanced copy of it and it's typical V. E. Schwab fair in the best way. Um, it is about a girl who um, grows up in a home for girls and doesn't know her family, doesn't know her history, except for um, her mother's journal that she's left with. And then one day she gets a letter from her uncle asking her to come home. Um, and there she starts to learn the mystery of Gallant, which is their house's, their home's name, the estate's name. So what I will do is I will draw a name, at the, I'll do a random drawing uh, at the end of this and you will get this copy to add to your collection. I think your kiddos will like it. It's really good. Um, it's great for fans of Crimson Peak, uh, the, that, the movie Crimson Peak and any of the Schwab's books, any kind of darker historical fantasy fans will really like this one. And then because I was talking about my cats and we talked about Buffy. Also, I'm taking French on Duolingo. So I'm testing my French here with you all. So that's Trois Shaw. So three cats. Indy's the gray one. Ozzy is the big orange one. And then Spike is the little orange one there. So those are my boys. Um, and since I we had to talk about Buffy, I had to show you Oz and Spike. So Jem Lear, I love to read. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much for being here. I really hope you've added some great books to your list. And I'm excited to hear if your patrons enjoy them and what you are looking forward to reading coming up. And I can't wait to... Uh, See you all again in April for March and April books.